Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It is the Waterproof Swell Pro Fisherman Max drone I'm doing a series on. This is going to be the first in a series. In this video, we're doing an unboxing, inspection, and setup. See everything we get, how it looks, how everything goes together. Then we're going to be doing a flight test a range test and also fishing waterproof test. So don't miss those videos and subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss this series. Anyway, let's get started and see how this thing is and see what it's all about. So as you guys know, I have done some previous reviews on Swell Pro's previous splash drones. This is the Splash Drone 4. You can kind of see the whole setup, how it is. And the Fisherman Max basically is supposed to have a whole different shape to it. It's supposed to be uh, kind of modular and expandable and collapsible. So anyway, here is the kind of pressurized foam the box comes in. And you got to spin it around here to get the handle. The handle's on the top. I'm just going to open it up with you for my first time and see how it is. So just two little tabs, pop that sucker open. Woo, and look at that, cool. So a whole different design on this one. Look how big these batteries are, man. Big old batteries. Let's check out what one of these batteries is like. I got three of them. I have two in the box here and then I have one that's in the drone. So check this thing out. They're doing a higher voltage now. This is a 22 nominal volts, 25.2 max, and they're 4,500 mAh. So we're going a lot higher voltage than the previous ones. Uh, I have a old battery here from the Splash Drone 4 and these ones were 4S. So we have a huge um, voltage increase from the 15 volt area to the 20 volt area in these guys. Now the old batteries had a higher capacity. These were 6600 mAh and these are 4500. So you're getting higher voltage, but a little bit of a smaller battery. So what you've got to do is remember you have to stack those batteries in series to get that higher voltage. So we'll see it definitely how long this thing flies in our flight test, but we just kind of want to see what it's all about in the box. So look at this thing guys, very interesting. I'm gonna pull everything out real quick, get it on the table, and so we can get more of a like in-depth stable view of this thing. So let's just unpack it first. We have our instruction manual with a couple of peripherals, a screwdriver, some cables. It looks like a tinted glass, possibly for the controller. Big old honking propellers. These look even bigger than the previous drones. Here is the controller. So the controller, very similar, but slightly different. I remember I was saying I got three batteries. So there's one, two, and there's one in here. Let's just make sure we don't miss anything while we got this thing opened up. This looks like a cell phone bracket for the controller. So that's gonna clip right on there. It's gonna screw in so you can have your cell phone mounted up and linked to it for your digital view. Looks like we have a kind of sturdy lanyard here. And that looks like that's about it all around the drone. So let's just pull this bad boy out. That thing is gigantic. So I'm gonna have to, I'm actually gonna have to put this somewhere else and so I can move these boxes around a little bit. So cables, looks like we have our charging link cable here and then we have a wall adapter there. And then the only thing we have left is this little compartment here and it looks like this is the LiPo charger. And it kind of looks like with every iteration they do with these drones, they keep getting better and better components. I remember the first charger on like their first Swell Pro Splash Drone wasn't so great, but these ones look like they're rebranding a quality type of charger to take care of those batteries. Anyway guys, that's everything out of the box. I'm gonna put this on the side and we are going to really inspect this Fisherman drone. Okay guys, so this thing is really massive. I mean, if you lift this up, it honestly feels like it weighs like over five pounds, maybe 10 pounds-ish in that territory by itself. I'll go ahead and have the specs up on the screen so you can kind of see how much it weighs, how much it can lift. But it's supposed to lift much more than the Splash Drone 4 over there. So. What they're doing with this one is they're trying to make this specifically just for heavy loads that fishermen want to drop for bait and stuff when they fish. And so that's why it's kind of like bigger and more powerful. Whereas those ones are beginning to be more of like the cinematic type of drone where if somebody wants to have a drone for their boat or something, you know, that just they can splash down in the water and it floats. But you also have a three axis gimbal 
the Splash Drone 4, that's kind of what that's for. So this one is specifically made more just for fishing. So what they're saying is they don't really, it doesn't really come with a three axis gimbal. This camera right here that's covered up, we'll uncover that in just a second. This I believe is only a one axis gimbal. So it's going to go up and down. And let's go ahead and check that out real fast while we're talking about it. So here's the foam that kind of covers this thing up. I'm just kind of pulling it forward, slide that bugger off. Let's get in here on this camera and just really see what it's all about. So on the bottom here, we have three buttons, settings back, okay record and photo down. So menu buttons as well as selection buttons. On the very top, we have our USB Still using the older USB up here, and then that's our SD card. And then remember, this is a waterproof drone, so you have to make sure all of these tabs that are rubber are all closed well. So just a one axis gimbal, mainly for just going down with the controller when you're gonna drop your bait. You know, it's dropping right, you can see your rig and stuff. I'm gonna take this little lens protector off there. And remember, it's a 4K camera, so it should shoot in some very clear 4K. Hopefully, we're gonna be testing all that, remember? So hang in there. So let's Let's put this on the table like this and just get a good view of these legs. Cool, so check these things out. So they're clear coated carbon fiber arms with it looks like aluminum brackets inside of them to hold everything together. They kind of rotate and fold like this. The wires are all coming out of the sides here. Let's just take a real quick look at the motors. These things are huge. It looks like they're using a screw on propeller system now where the propellers don't like notch and lock anymore. They screw in and lock. So that just tells you how much power and torque this thing's gonna have. Look at the bottom here. It's an aluminum motor stand here or bottom of the motor actually. It's built into the motor and it has all of these hard aluminum fins for heat sink built in. So they're not listing any uh, specs on the motor. They're just calling it the Swell Pro Fisherman Max motor and it says check propellers. And then there's a B and the other one should say A right here. Yeah, so identical motors, just one's A, one's B because the propellers are gonna spin in opposite directions. All right, so there's a way you open these up. You see how they're overlapping here? Looks like you can't open up the top one first. You've got to open up the bottom, swing that sucker out, and then the top one can open, okay? So back then front, as far as this is the front of the drone right here. So the way you secure the arms is that kind of has this sliding collar lock. So you just kind of push it forward till you get to the threads and just really simply just, you know, screw it on. Probably give it a not too tight of a cinch down, but tight enough where, you know, these things aren't going to be getting loose and stuff when it's in the air in the water. So there we go. Good cinch. Check out the antennas. So very similar to the Splash Drone 4 where their antennas could rotate. So if you're going out and the drone's going to be like way overhead. You know, you can fix them in any position you want. So I think usually people are going to be locking these off at like the bottom downward position because they're going to be flying the drone over their heads, right? All right, so let's spin it around. So the feet are definitely very similar to the other one. We just have like these rubber little joints here that link the carbon fiber rods all the way around. So this top view here, that's basically the arms are on the drone. Everything looks good and you can see how gigantic that is. Let's compare it with the Splash Drone 4. Okay. All right. So I got the Splash Drone 4 just on top of it, upside down, and I'm just kind of setting it on there so it kind of rests on there. But check out how much longer the arms are. So from the edge of the arm of the Splash Drone 4 to the edge of the motor of the Fisherman Max, five inches in every direction. So you're talking about 10 inches longer, you know what I mean, diagonally from this point to that point over there. 10 inches is a very large length for a drone, that's for sure. And I think that's definitely to fit the larger propellers. And speaking of the larger propellers, guys, I got the full set in the box. They did give me an extra set, but I think you gotta buy those separate. These are gigantic carbon fiber propellers. I also wanna kinda compare these to the Splash Drone 4. Okay, so here we go. Here's a Splash Drone 4 propeller on the left. And look at how much bigger the Fisherman Max propeller is. It's just giant in comparison. If I match up one end, yeah, it's like the same length as we were with the arm, getting that same extra length of the arm compared to the, the four. So that's a huge difference, much wider. I mean, look at if I just put the propeller right on top, just an absolute monster of a propeller. Again, these are carbon fiber, hardcore propellers here, very dangerous. So these, you wanna be very, very careful flying 
flying around people and over buildings and over vehicles, all that kinds of stuff. So, you know, this is definitely not a toy guys. This is, this is professional grade waterproof fishing drone. So be very, very careful with this kind of stuff. Okay, so there's a viewer of our motor there. So remember, these are like screw on here. So very, very interesting. We have A and B propellers. That's an A motor, little A there. So we wanna make sure we have A propeller here to match it up and really, okay, wow. So you see this here? So the outer, it's kind of like how you screw the arms on. The outer ring of this is actually spinning. So you're gonna first lock this in. See that little inner square? You're gonna put it down in so the inner square locks. This one I have to thread counterclockwise they have these little writings on it here where it says unlock screw that way and you see that little lock thing there with an arrow screw that way so it's just going to be the opposite for the b propellers so just keep going until definitely want to get these kind of as tight as finger tight as possible so that sucker that is so beefy man that's a gigantic propeller i'm almost scared to fly this thing but i know it's going to be fun so there it is that's how you put the propellers on while we're at it let's just see how difficult it is to take these off so remember this is the opposite thread propeller yeah, so very simple. So that's almost as fast as like a twist lock propeller that other drones have. Okay, so we haven't really taken a really good look at the top here. Here's the top and they have a total different battery system. So what we're doing here with this system guys is we're pushing these tabs to unlock. There is kind of, you can't really see it, but there is a little lock on this side and an unlock on that side. And then we have that color coded orange there it means it's unlocked on all four of them. What I'd recommend is just this little ridge on the bottom here, just kind of push like pivot on the arms and kind of wiggle it and see how that comes up. So after you pick that sucker up, the battery just comes right out the top and check the inside here. So you can see the silicone seal, very heavy duty, kind of like a three dimensional silicone seal that's poking up. Usually seals are, are down in there. Connectors right there for the battery. So it looks like they're definitely sealing it better than the other ones they've had before because you really just don't want to get anything in there. Little red anodized aluminum guys here. And those are the tabs that are going to lock in from those switches on the top of the battery. See how these things are going to work. When you push them back and forth, they're just gonna clip right on those little latches here. So absolutely super important that this battery is pushed down uh, as good as it can go. And then these are both latched. All four of them are latched actually to keep it waterproof. All right, so we haven't checked out the bottom. I'm gonna put this battery back in that will flip the drone over. All right, so you see how that did that? Just definitely push it down really hard and then make sure all those tabs are clicked. So here's the bottom of the drone. Very cool. Wow, look at these lights. I didn't even notice this. These are super high powered LED lights with covers. You can see here on the bottom, it's kind of a translucent white cover and there are two very large LEDs right down in there. So here's the bottom of the drone. So remember we had our one axis camera here with the 4K lens. Then right over here, this is our drop mechanism. And check this out, more aluminum on the bottom. This is all aluminum, this inner plate here. Then we have these cooling fins, power button here. We have our cable for our drop mechanism. And these things are cool and check it out. That's a double drop mechanism. So you can do two baits at the same time or one after the other with this thing. So you got two poles or whatever, however you wanna do it. You go ahead and you rig up two baits. You press the bait release. It can release one and then the other. So you can actually put bait in two different spots on the same flight if you want. That's great. So really guys, just a very industrial and professional looking drone that they've gone to. So now that we've seen what the drone's all about guys, let's check out the other peripherals we get in the box. Here's the controller. So antennas are unscrewing if you want them to. We have one antenna that's labeled 5.8G and one that's labeled 2.4. But check this thing out. So here it is, a lot different than a lot of the other controllers. The Swell Pro 4 was more compact here. And this is interesting because we have a screen here. It's giving us a little warning here to, what, to read this before you take off. You scan this QR code with your phone. You get the app on your phone so you can run this screen 
screen as well as have your app. And check this screen out. It actually tilts up about yay far. It's about 45 degrees. Right over here on the left hand corner, we have a power and a magnification button. The right hand side, we have a channel menu and band. So remember this was the phone mount we had in the box here. So just a heavy duty aluminum phone mount that you can unscrew here. See that, how it kind of expands, lock it back down for however big your phone is. As you can see, there's a notch here and then there's a notch on this. So it looks like it has to go this way. So this is definitely not gonna fit a tablet, guys. This is just for a larger phone. As you can see, you pull it down like this, put your phone in there, and then you just screw this off wherever your phone is. Interesting, so we have dual screens here. We can use our phone and we have a screen up here. We have a battery light, our power here, function, a function light here. As you can see on our sticks, you can see how we have these silicone rubber seals all around the left and right sticks. And then we have all of our buttons. If you guys haven't seen like Swell Pro products before, they always have these little toggle switches that are also encased in silicone to keep them waterproof. And uh, photo preview video. These are three-way toggles. Off payload A and payload B, awesome. So this is the double payload switch. So all the way up is off. One, two, A and B. So you can release them all at the same time if you just went down really quick and you wanted to just drop two things or you can drop A, fly to a different location, drop B, that's awesome. Got a little up button here. Over on this side, we have the same thing, but it's a down button here. So the right side's got one two-way toggle, normal flying and return to home. Return to home will make the craft fly back to its launch point. Then over here, we got GPS, cruise and Addy mode. So I definitely wanna just keep it in GPS mode. You got cruise mode and Addy mode. Addy mode usually just, um, turns off the GPS, so that's kind of risky. It'll blow around in the wind. You usually want to have this all the way up GPS mode so that you can definitely have a lock and it will just keep itself stationary in the sky. Really do not want to stick any kind of knife or sharp object in here. So I just have this toothpick I had in my pocket. And let's see if we can't get this thing open. There we go. So I do like how it's hard to open because you know that is going to be waterproof and sealed in there. And it's a USB-C type of port. So you're going to plug right in there and charge it. And I believe we should have gotten a cable in the box for that as well. So when you're not using it, just make sure you really push this thing closed so it's all sealed up. Speaking of the other stuff in the box, guys, here we go. This is the manual. We have a little bag here. This is where you're gonna have that USB cable. So there is our USB A to C where we can charge our controller. What else we got in here? Oh, cool. So I was wrong about that thing on the very top here. I had thought that was like some kind of external compass, this little black thing up here, but that's actually the breather valve or breather tops. So these are kind of like waterproof one-way breather valves. So when the water is just on top, it's not gonna go in, but it lets a little bit of air kind of equalize the pressure inside and outside of the craft. So that's very interesting. I was wrong about that. So we've essentially got a whole extra setup plus an extra just the breather paper itself right there. One long Allen screwdriver, one screen protector for the controller. I had kind of had to work to get this off, but as you can see, there is a thin layer of protectant there and that's actually not sticky. So it should be sticky on one side and then this side here is just gonna be the, to protect the glass itself or the plastic. Really guys, the last thing in the box that came with the drone is this charger. So interesting, Swell Pro, Pro branded 200 watt, 10 amp AC DC. We have some buttons here, start charge, status, stop or battery type select. Multitude of ports here. We have a five volt 2.1 amp USB-A, PC link, USB-C, temp sensor, balance socket for up to one, two, three, four, five, six S. And then we have our two connectors here, a fan with a DC input, 11 to 18 volts for a XT60 type connector there. Our power cord can go there, power on off switch. So just one fan that's gonna suck air all the way through. This is just basically a breather port, but uh, it feels like a quality charger, man. This thing's got some heft to it. And here's the cables you get with it to charge it. Wow, I really like that. I thought you had to pull these off, but check that out. These are spring loaded little safety tubes coming right down. So of course, red to red. 
I'm really liking that. I haven't seen those before. So as you push the thing in, it just spring loads. And so you're not gonna have any unnecessary or unwanted contact actually. And then put our balance plug right here. Charger's ready to go. You're just gonna use this charger here to plug into your wall and then plug right in there in the back of the controller. And then nothing really to it. Just grabbing a battery and plugging it in Wow, and something else new to me, guys. I was like, hello, how do you plug this into the bottom? And I just pull it over and there you go. There's your charge port. So they have a whole different port for charging. This bottom here is just where it plugs into the drone. And this can go only, only go on one way. You can see that there's a little uh, plastic stub in there. So just plug it right in like that. That's it, super easy. So it looks like with the charger included, you're only gonna be able to charge them one at a time. So along with those extra propellers, guys, I also got this box of floating buoys. So it doesn't seem like this drone is gonna really float very good because it's more of a compact, kind of less air in the body type of drone. And these guys all look exactly the same. So they're gonna be universal for each arm. Let's just go really quick through how to set these up. So at first I thought the rubber bands were, they kind of meant something like it was going to be kind of a safety or whatever, but it just won't go on with these things on there. These tolerances are so tight that with that little rubber band underneath this arm, it's already super hard to get on. So, you know, you're just going to have to really push this thing up while you push it down. There we go. You see how it slides over that little cam and then you just push to click. So you'll do the same thing on all four arms. Definitely put these on guys if you're gonna be flying over water. And there we go guys. So remember this is how it looks with all of the floaties on, got all four. Just the gigantic honking drone, man. That thing is gonna be great for power. Hopefully efficiency too. We're gonna see how long this thing lasts and how much flight time it has, but gives you an idea of what it looks like when it's just ready to go, ready to fly. Okay guys, so I just plugged in to charge the first battery. And if you look at the screen here, it wants to charge at 6.5 amps. And if you remember, these are only 4,500 amp, uh, milliamp hour batteries. You usually wanna charge to coincide with the milliamp hour. So 4,500 milliamps would usually be 4.5 amps of charge. So these guys are giving it a little high on the default of the charger. So if you wanted to kind of make your batteries last longer, I would recommend changing the amperage. And the way you do that, I'm gonna show you right now, is you press stop and then these two buttons here, you see how that amperage there is changing on the left. So we wanna go down to 4.5 amps. So I'm gonna start it there and it just does a check. It checks if it is uh, 6S, which this is. So that's six 3.7 volt batteries in series to make that 25 volts, 20 or so volts. So let's go ahead and press start. Just wanna give you an example of how it looks. And there you go, so it's balancing the battery. All we need to do is wait for that thing to charge. I'll go ahead and have it pop up how long it took to charge one out of the box. If you guys were also wondering how to charge the controller, guys, this thing is great because it has a little USB port, USB-A port on the charger, and you can just plug right in to the controller from the USB port. Let's plug this in here, and we should see the battery light come on. Yeah, there we go. Okay guys, so this guy here, the controller, actually only took five minutes to charge. So I assume this was almost fully charged. The main battery on the charger has been charging for 90 minutes. It looks like it's just kind of trickle charging, finishing up now. So we're gonna leave that and maybe tr just try to start this thing up. I'm just going ahead and scanning the QR code on the front of the controller. And let's just open this up, see where it takes us. And maybe just try with a battery that's already in the craft that's not fully charged, just to kind of check it out. So as you can see, once we get and scan that QR code, it brings us to the Splash Drone website and and we have the Fisherman Max. We wanna pick on the Fisherman Max. Let's see what else we gotta do. Let's do the FD Fly app first. Let's try to go ahead and get that. Let's just try to get it on Google. So there it is. So that's the one we need to install. So let's install that there. All right, so let's take off this screen here. Since we scanned this QR code, we found out what that's all about. Let's go ahead and power this up first. So I'm just gonna click power and then press and hold. Let's see, click click and hold there we go all right so there we go we got a fuzzy screen let's go ahead and leave that up and let's go ahead and boot up the drone itself so remember on the very bottom there's a button all the way on the back looks like it's gonna be a click click and hold 
There we go. Wow, did you see it? That was super quick. And check this out. This thing's got a speaker in it, the controller. So that's pretty neat. It's got a very clear, robust speaker. Let's go ahead and quickly just take a look at the screen. So very clear video. Looks like it's uh, 2.7K, 60 frames per second. So guys, if you just wanted to use this screen, you can just go ahead and use that. You don't have to put your phone on here. So it's kind of using like the analog technology of the older drones but at least you can put your phone up there too if you wanted more of a digital type of situation. So as I'm switching these switches, let's see what it says real quick. Cruise mode. Cruise. So cruise would be basically like if you're pushing a stick forward in a certain direction and you hit you hit cruise. Cruise mode. You can let off the stick and it should be able to just go that speed or in that direction. So be very careful with that. You know, you don't want to crash into anything. Return to home. GPS mode. So I'm really liking the voice, that's great. So let's take a look at this servo, guys. So as I click the payload, we're totally off right now. Let's click down to A. Cool, so that releases the first one here and then we click down to B and that goes all the way back and releases the second one. So that thing's working awesome. And that camera also, check that out. As I kind of move the drone up and down, you see how that camera is trying to stay level. So the one axis gimbal camera is working very good. So check out that camera in there, guys. Let's test what these buttons do. Remember these two on the top, left and right. Let's go ahead and press. The right one says down on the button. So we'll push that. You see how the camera is just going down, just holding the button. So it will go all the way down to 90 degrees and then we can hold the left button and pull it all the way up to horizon. If we let go, it'll stop wherever we let go, but I want it to get all the way up, so I'm just gonna hold it and it will stop at level. All right guys, so let's just quickly talk about what we see on the controller screen before we try and connect the phone and stuff. So up at the top right, we're seeing our battery power for the controller. We're seeing our signal strength between the controller and the drone. This is what it's going to record on the camera, 2.7K at 60 frames per second is what it's set at default. The horizon line is right here. We have some other information here. These are coordinates. We have our heading right here. It looks like it's heading at 14 degrees. So kind of cool. We have like a pilot's heads up display here. And then these are all of our like speeds right here. So it looks like it's in meters per second mode. So height, it's kind of all clustered together. It says aircraft connected. Right up here, it says aircraft connected. It's just telling us what channel we're on for our FPV. Okay, so 22.7 volts. We do have 12 satellites in the house. That's pretty good. And it's telling us what mode we're in here on the top left. We're in GPS mode. You can see it change as I move Earth that. Mode. It changed to C. ATTI mode. And that changed to A. So that's really all there is to it on the drone screen. Let's see what it's gonna take to connect the phone here. So over here in your wireless settings, you're gonna see SWP. So that stands for Swell Pro. I'm gonna just try to connect to it. All right guys, so the instruction manual actually says the password's very simple. It's just one through eight. And let's hit the check mark. Let's see if it connects. So immediately once we type in that password, we actually have a connection. And you can see that this kind of lit up in red and it's ready to go. So that is connected. And as soon as I hit that connected, look at what it brings up. So it's bringing up interface for the FD Fly. And like I was saying, this is basically a automated flight interface right so we can do some of the things remember this mounts right here on the controller so we just kind of unscrew that back screw push our phone in making sure that we don't touch any of the buttons and then screwing that back screw down tight and there we go so we have our phone and our analog screen so this is going to be of course a digital wi-fi connection to the controller which in turn connects to the drone itself. So let's just really see what this interface is all about here. And then we'll probably end it with this and go on to the next video, which will be the flight test. So if you wanted to do automated flights, here you go. You also have all the information that you would on the other screen up here. So you have your coordinates on the bottom here. You also have GPS, what mode it's in, 10 satellites, 22 volts, 100% of the controller and a hundred percent on the drone it looks like okay so this is just kind of a default world map there's our compass down on the bottom guys so check that out we can also let's see what we can do on this thing we can minimize it so we have a compass kind of minimization like other drones we can maximize it 
And that's kind of really all we can do here. I can't click and hold or press anything else. It's just basically showing the pilot here is a little square showing which direction I'm facing and which direction the drone is facing that little airplane icon there. So at least we have that sort of map. We can zoom in on the map here. We're in the house, so it looks like the drone is over here. So I wouldn't trust that because it's just not accurate. You're going to have better accuracy once you go outside because we only do have 10 satellites. So anyway, we have all these things we can do and check this out. If you just wanted to start clicking on the screen, boom, waypoint one, there you go. So this is just a single waypoint. If you wanted to do multiple waypoints, you see this button up here, there's like a little multiple button icon there, multiple waypoints. So then I would just go click, click, click. So you can do however many waypoints you want. And let's see what happens if we click on one waypoint if we can change things. Now that's awesome. So we can change our height at that waypoint, our speed going to the waypoint, how long you want it to hover at the waypoint. We can scroll down here a bit. If you want it to release payload A and or B at that each waypoint, that's awesome. And it also shows you the latitude and longitude coordinates of the waypoint. So I'm gonna confirm there. And so that's pretty cool. You can set that for all the different waypoints. We can also download the maps adjust download area that's awesome by dragging and zooming so say i wanted to download this area that i'm going to be flying in and i'm just going to tap to download name your map i'm just going to name it one right here with this little keypad that pops up confirm download failed okay <laughs> so let me just show you what that's about okay now this is the kind of conundrum with these wi-fi drones right i'm going to connect back onto my internet at home so now that i have an internet connection again i'm going to go ahead and Click download now and then name that map one again. Boom and confirm. That time download success because we were connected to the internet. So a couple of little quirks that you're gonna have to deal with if you're gonna be flying in an area with no coverage. I'm gonna go back into my Wi-Fi and reconnect to the craft. So pretty cool guys, Pretty a pretty robust system as far as automated flight you can do. Let's see what's up here. So we can choose from standard map. That's just kind of the Google standard. We can choose the satellite where I already was, and we can choose dark mode. So it's kind of like roadmaps in dark mode. So I like the satellite, right? You want to see the satellite imagery and foliage and stuff. And then we only have these two GPS point selection modes, right? So we can tap multiple or just one. And then if we click check here, you can cancel a waypoint. So say I put a waypoint here. Let's get out of this real quick. Waypoint there. And if I just wanted to quickly trash it, Let's see, select your waypoint trash. So those are the kind of the ways you can select waypoints. So this star here, this is where I'm gonna save uh, my route. So say we'll just call this whatever home. So that basically saved my waypoint route, hopefully. Let's go into the folder here and there we go. So that's the one that I wanted to bring up again. So whenever you make waypoint routes, you can save them, redo them. And then we have our takeoff button here. I don't have any, uh, propellers on there, but let's see what happens when I just click take off. Okay, guys, the drone's going to try to take off, but of course it won't be able to. So you're ready to run your waypoint mission. You go ahead and you press take off, slide to take off. Take off. There it goes. And the motor spin up. So I know it's kind of loud right now. Say I wanted to land it or turn it off. You saw what I did? I just basically pulled the sticks down to the corners, the outside corners to shut it off. So that's kind of the way you can uh, do a waypoint mission. And we're gonna do that. We're gonna do like a designated video on that in the very near future. So make sure you guys kind of subscribe to the channel because we're not only gonna do a waypoint mission, we're gonna do an initial flight test. We're also gonna do, uh, see how the payload releasing is, see how much this thing can carry. It's supposed to be able to carry quite a bit of poundage and I'll have that pop up on how much this thing is supposed to be able to carry. And we also can shoot in, it says 2.7 uh, K okay, at 60 frames per second on the controller. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing any way to change that in the app here. This is kind of like just for the automated flight app, it looks like, because I'm not seeing any other options to change. And that's one of the things I wish Swell Pro would kind of 
enhance is their data connection and the ability to change things because the only real way you're going to be able to change your um, resolution is by pressing the buttons and going into the menu on the camera all right guys let's get into the camera really quick and i'm going to throw in a micro sd card here now you're going to want to do this before you kind of adjust any settings in the camera because it looks like it won't take any settings so if you have the camera facing this way and you're looking at the top front of the camera looks like you're going to want to put your little micro SD card in with the image facing up like the coloration and stuff let's see how this goes in it should just push and click see now it's saying card error again that's popping up on the screen here let me zoom in for you I'm gonna to try to grab a different one and see if that one works I'm getting this card out I'm gonna to try to switch it out with the 32 gig uh, SanDisk Extreme there we go this card registered so zooming into the controller check that out so it's saying sd card in and there's 29 gigabytes available so now that the card's in there guys just keep an eye on the screen and i'm going to be pressing some buttons as we do this so the far right button says settings and back so i'm going to just push it once the settings come up and let's see if we press if we can get through the menu there we go so i'm pressing the photo down button and you see how it's kind of going through here. I want to press OK on photo. There we go. So we can adjust our size. So it's defaulting at four by three. If I press OK, I want to go to down with the left button and go 16 by nine. OK, so that changed it. Format, we can do JPEG or JPEG DNG. So at least you have that option to choose the two. Press OK just on. We can do burst. So when you click that photo button, it'll do a burst if you want. And you can adjust three, five, or 10. So time lapse, you could do that if you wanted to. And ISO, it's in auto. If I press OK, we can do kind of incremental here, right? So auto one, two, three, four, eight, 16, or 3200 in the ISO. So I'm just gonna leave it on auto. Go to video. Press OK. So 2.7K 60, if I press OK on that, we can go 4K 30, 2.7 30, 1080 120, and 1080 60. 1080 30, and we can all go down through 720 as well. So 4K 30, it defaults at 22.760. I think I might leave it in that just because it was defaulting at that. So I'm just gonna click OK on 2.760. EIS, so that's electronic image stabilization, which will help the shakiness of the camera a little bit. You can turn that on or off if you want to. NTSC format, we can choose MP4 or MOV. So if you wanted to play our video, we can click OK, go down to videos and play and see how the interface actually pops up here. So we can select through the videos we already took. So at least you can watch them in the field like this, you know what I mean, before you take out your SD card at home or something. So guys, if I go ahead and press OK on a video, we can see that the video will play. So that's just a real brief video I took, remember? And we can cycle through them if we want by pressing down. There's the other one, press OK. So at least in the field, you can check your videos on this screen. Now, very low resolution, analog kind of screen. So the technology isn't really on par with what's out there now, as far as like DJI and other stuff goes. Anyway guys, I think that really gives you an in-depth kind of first look at everything that the new fisherman can kind of do and, you know, in the initial setup. So just a quick little rehash, a little pros and cons. Still not up to par with the technology on some of the newer drones like Autel, DJI, even like the Femi line and others. But the main purpose for this drone is to be waterproof, lift heavy weight, and fish with it. So at least you're doing that, which other drones can't do, but you're limited in some of the technology, right? And each generation, these things keep getting better slowly and slowly. So maybe eventually we'll see Swell Pro come out with a drone that actually has uh, technology like on par with some of the, the higher end drones. But for now, guys, I think that's gonna do it for the unboxing setup and all that stuff. There actually was no new update. I think the, the new update is the one I have here, my contact at Swell Pro said. So no need to do an update right now. But the next flight, guys, remember is going to be the full-on in-depth flight test 
And this is going to be a series, so make sure you subscribe and check on that link down below where you can get the Swell Pro Fisherman and also where all the other videos are going to be. I'm going to have the series pop up here. You can also check it down in the description. And we're going to put this thing through the ringer like I do with all of my drones. We're going to fly it into the water. We're going to do a full on flight test. I also want to do the weight payload test, right? To see how much this thing can actually carry because it is so hefty of a drone. It can carry a lot. And then also try out this automated flight mission with the payload release at certain points. You know what I mean? So we can have it auto flight to one point, drop one payload to another point, drop another payload. The really interesting thing is you can put in your coordinates on here. So I don't know, kind of interesting for like reconnaissance missions or even dropping medical supplies or different payloads if you know the coordinates of the exact point. So very interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed this initial first look video. Don't forget lots more to come with the Swell Pro Fisherman. Stay tuned and I will see you in the next one.